What's up everybody? We are here at a new listing that I'm working on. Probably coming to you by the time you guys see this. Probably pretty close to be on the market, maybe a week or two out. Um, right now what we're doing today is kind of a, some cool stuff. So I actually have my stager. Shout out to Kristen. She's inside right now. Uh, you guys will probably see her a little bit later. We'll introduce her to the channel. Um, basically what she's doing is she's walking through the entire house right now. This is a new listing I just picked up and so we're kind of in the first raw stages. So I want you guys to kind of see like the behind the scenes look as to the prep that gets a house ready before it goes on market. Um, and so what she's doing is she's walking through the house and she's basically making a list with my seller right now talking about all the things that we can improve on and change and tweak and make difference so that the house is super appealing and neutral and just pops the best when it actually comes on market. So I'm gonna go back in there, I'm gonna check in on them and then uh, we'll give you guys an update after that. All right, I'll be there in like 10. When? Like 10 minutes. Okay, sounds good. All right, deuces. All right, later bro. Later. Um, are you rolling? Yeah. Hi everybody on the camera world watching me. All right, let's talk about some stuff. You want to talk about some stuff? Yes. All right, let's do this. Um, so let's talk about what I was just telling you about because we're going to keep it raw and keep it OG for the, the viewers. We we're talking about the three D's of real estate. And for anybody that's in real estate, you've probably heard of the three D's. If you haven't heard of them, you probably haven't because they're kind of like the sad truth of a lot of real estate deals. Basically, what it, what it is is the three Ds stand for, see I'm pausing for dramatic effects here. I'm gonna let you guys stew on it for a second. I'm just gonna let you think about what, what the three Ds stand for before I tell you, all right? Grant, edit in like some little click right now, like with the Jeopardy clock. You know, where it goes like, do do. Some people just are thinking about what the three Ds are. I'm just gonna drive wild. All right, now that you got that, here's the three Ds. Three Ds of real estate are death, divorce, and default. So, basically, if you're not smart enough to put together why those are the three Ds of real estate, it says that a lot of the deals that come about in the real estate world are unfortunately from people either getting divorced, people are passing away, death, or people are defaulting, meaning they're like in, they're in money troubles. You know, they need to sell the house because they can't afford it. Um, it's getting repossessed by the bank and it needs to get sold. Like whatever the issue is, like that's, that's default. So those are the three D's of real estate. So now if anybody ever comes across and they're like, oh man, I wonder how a lot of real estate deals come about in the world. You can just instantly hit them up with, oh, the three D's. I know what the three D's are. So there you guys go. It's the three D's of real estate. You're, uh, Glasses, maybe my jacket, so it doesn't look like I'm just rambling about one thing all at once. Super stupid to do, and not really necessary, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Because when I watch it, I'm gonna be like, "Yo, I know that you just rambled all that off, and you tried to make it look like it was time different." Okay, so I'm gonna give you some behind-the-scenes uh, um, looks and footage, um, basically of like a real estate deal. Okay, so this morning. Um, I was actually dealing with this and I just got a call, uh, just got a call about an update on it. So here's the situation. This is a real life deal. I'm not exaggerating anything. I'm not leaving out any facts. This is, this is basically how this came about. So this is like a, like how my world works kind of thing, right? So this is today that we're filming this. I don't know when you guys will be watching this, but today we're filming is Thursday. So last Friday, so six days ago, I got a call from a person in Washington that I have never met uh, that found me online that called and said that they are interested in looking at a property and they wanted to know if I could show it to them. So of course I said yes and I went out and showed them this property. I was working with the mom of the person that called me as she lives here and they're going to be buying it together in a sense. Super nice clients. Met her at the property. She fell in love with this place. It is a really, really cool property. Um, it's actually out in Guerneville of all places, but it has like this awesome setting. It like backs up to a creek. If you guys follow me on Instagram, uh, you actually saw this on my Instagram story last Thursday. Um, so there's a plug in to follow me on Instagram so you get the behind the scenes look of things. Anyway, uh, we go out there you know, contact the agent that my client's interested in the property. Well, it just so happens that because this place is so cool that like a ton of other people are also interested in the property. So 
what they end up doing is when situations like that happen, a lot of times what listing agents do or the agent representing the seller basically creates what we call like an offer review date. And what they do is rather than saying, oh, well, we'll look at your offer or we'll take your offer or whatever it is to give everybody a fair shot and to give the property enough time to be like exposed properly, they'll usually wait like a week to 10 days and then they'll say any and all offers are due. In this case, it was next Wednesday or yesterday at 5 p.m. And so that gives everybody that's interested a, a chance to come up with their offer, submit it, go look again, like whatever they want to do. So that way nobody later on can say, oh, well, we would have gotten you a higher price or we would have offered more or less or whatever. So we write our offer, we submit our offer, and um, then I get a call back this morning basically saying that our offer is like one of the best out of there. Turned out being eight offers on this property. Um, our offer is one of the best offers um, out of those eight and they wanted to basically clear up a few little facts and details um, to see if we would be willing to do that. So one of those things, and this is getting like super like nerdy on the real estate end, so if you guys don't like this kind of stuff, you can skip past this part, but it's actually kind of informative and good to know. One of the things that they were wondering about is there was eight offers, so obviously it's going way over the asking price in order to you know, have the winning offer get accepted. Um, and when things end up doing that, a problem that can happen is appraisals. Appraisals won't come in at the value. So for instance, say there's a house that's listed at 500,000, and there's eight offers on it, and so it ends up getting bidded up to 600,000, um, you know, after everybody bids against each other, and 600,000 is what, you know, it ends up going for. Well, now that house has to appraise at 600,000, and if it doesn't, sorry, I'm fucking fighting a cold. <coughs> this is such a long ramble. You're gonna have to cut this up and make me look good. If it doesn't appraise at 500,000, basically what is gonna happen is the bank is gonna say, well, we're only going to lend on, say, it appraises to five fifty. So we're only going to lend you up to five hundred fifty thousand dollars now. But what's the problem? You already told me you'll give them six hundred thousand for the house. So now there's a fifty thousand dollar price discrepancy that has to be made up by either the buyer, the seller, or a combination of the two of them, kind of meeting in the middle. Um, so anyway, that was kind of the details that we had to get worked out earlier today because my client is purchasing with a loan which is not a big deal, but the lender requires that appraisal to actually take place. And there was offers on the table that were all cash, and when you're all cash, you actually don't have to have an appraisal done unless you want to. And so, freaking jerk. Um, so basically what we were trying to figure out is if we could swing eliminating that appraisal contingency so that our offer was as appealing and as desirable as these cash offers that we were competing against. And I don't want to jinx this, but I just got a call from her literally like five minutes ago saying that it looks like we're going to be the ones that are going to get this because we were able to do that and make it work. and all that fun stuff. So basically, uh, my day has been absolutely all over the place and we're doing everything from negotiating out these appraisal situations like I was telling you about, to prepping a new listing to get ready for market and now I'm going to get a gift from my client because uh, my client loves me and he wants to give me a Christmas present. So that's a full, raw, behind the scenes look at a day in the life of a real estate agent. And we got a new ping pong table at the office. Once again, if you follow me on my Instagram story, you would see it. Stiga Optima 30, it's a like super high end Olympic grade table and the thing is bad ass. So anyway, and next week I'm going to Cabo. All kinds of crazy stuff going on. It's Christmas, like the world's a crazy place. A crazy place. Yesterday, dude, I don't, how long have I been rambling? Seven minutes. Holy crap! <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, if you've listened, if you've listened to this full entire ramble and like for the, the you've been here since minute zero, you're a real OG. I'm just leaving it in. Just leave it in, dude. It's I'm a the easiest vlog to edit. Here, we're gonna do this. This this is what the the big time YouTubers Go do. Go to my dad's office. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the big time YouTube videos do. Hey, if you've been watching this up to this point and you've seen everything, I'm gonna put a code and the code's gonna be right here on the screen. Okay, so put a code right here on the screen. Okay. We'll come up with a good idea. And if you use that code and you post a picture of me on your Instagram story with that code as the hashtag and tag me in it, I'll send you a $10 Amazon gift card. That's a good one, right? $10? 15. It's like 
I think they don't even have a ten dollar Amazon <laughs> gift card. It's too cheap. What if you just like say, go give him a shout out because that doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, but who wants a shout out for me? It's not like I'm that important. Yeah. Speaking of, this rolls me into my next topic. Here we so go. going back to the original thing though, if you've been watching this point, honestly, if you put that code that you saw on the screen and you put it on your Instagram story and you tag me in it, I'll send you a $25 Amazon gift card. Use this video as proof. Cross my heart, hope to die. Yeah, I'm getting 25 bucks. Nah, you better. All right, here we go. This brings me to my next topic though about how I'm not as big of a deal, so that's why people don't want shout outs. So when I started this vlog thing, I think we're on episode, this is 15. This is 15, bro. That's like a landmark. That's a lot. Wow. Episode 15! <laughs> cool, dude. <laughs> so when I started all this, um, whatever it was, like three, four, or five months ago, I don't even remember, I told Grant, Grant, you can attest Me. to this. I told him, I said, you watch, everybody's gonna start doing real estate vlogs now. This is gonna be the, the turn of the century. In 10 years from now, if you don't have a vlog, you're gonna be the weird one. So, what ended up happening? I don't know if you guys follow like real estate people online. Probably don't. Probably don't, but go and look. In the last like about month, specifically in the last week, Ryan Serhant, who's like the main dude on Million Dollar Listings New York, which is like a big real estate TV show. Josh Altman, who's the main dude on the LA one. And then Josh Flagg, who we don't like him. Uh, he's a little punk. Anyway, he's on the LA show too. All three of them, you know what they've done in the last month? They've all started real estate vlogs. Holy shit. So guess what? If we go back to the date that my first video was dropped compared to their first video, I win. I beat them. So my prediction was right. That didn't work. Too bad? Yeah. So basically what I'm getting at with all this is I think that Bravo, Bravo TV if you're watching this, which you're definitely not, uh, I think that I should get a video because I was the one to have this, uh, or uh, not a video, a TV show, because I was the one to have this uh, idea to start a vlog. And now all these big famous real estate agents are copying me. So if anything, I should get royalties off copied, their views. Should have copyrighted it. Should have copyrighted it. Why didn't you tell me that? Because I didn't think people would start making real estate I should have called my attorney and asked my attorney for that. We should get a tattoo right now. You want to get yatted? I want to get yatted right now. Eek my whole body. I don't give a mother. Hecker. Put 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 little put Wiz Khalifa in the video with me, just like going like this right now. When I, when I say that, yeah. All right. I just want to be vibing with Wiz. All right. The viewers say we've been here before. That's sick, actually. I like that. Nice rack. <laughs> Racks on rack on rack. Dude. So here is what. Mr. Michael Bordessa, shout out to Mike. This is what he got me for a little thank you, Merry Christmas deal. Bottle of Booker's. It's a, a small batch bourbon series. And what I told him, and what I think you would agree with, is that even if this is the worst bottle of whiskey I've ever had, the case makes it totally worth it. Which I'm sure it will be, it looks really good. But uh, yeah, super stoked on that. He got me a little cigar too, so pumped. Thank you, Mike. Take care of your clients, they'll take care of you. It's the name of the game. And that's gonna do it for this week's vlog, everybody. Merry Christmas! We're gonna shoot another video for Christmas? Uh, probably. Well, we're gonna say this. If we feel like shooting another video before Christmas, we will, and if we don't, Merry Christmas, and that way we're done with it. Perfect. See that? See, uh, do you like how festive I am today? Look oh, at yeah, the look hat. At the, turn the sweater on oh, for shit, it. Hold this. I got you. Look at me being a filmer. There we go. Fine. Look at my shirt, everyone. Fine, dude.